Uh, this is a tutorial video for rotational knife throwing, also known as conventional or spin or circus or traditional knife throwing. A good rotational thrower is like a relaxed robot. Everything must be done in the same way every time. For example, a tiny change in your grip or in your stance can have a tremendous effect on how the knife behaves in the air and if it sticks or not. To make your throwing solid, you must be aware of several details, which I will tell you in the following. Please notice there are many different approaches to rotational throwing. For example, some people use big Bowie style knives with a smaller throwing motion. My style is quite the opposite. So what's the correct method for doing this? It's something that you have developed for yourself based on what works best for you. So these kinds of tutorial videos are only to give you some ideas that you can try in your own training. The stance. Not too narrow, not too wide. Hips square to the target. Core is tight, back is straight, but the whole body is still relaxed. Next, you raise your knife to the front. Pay attention in which angle the knife is in your hand. You gotta keep that same angle during the wind-up. From here begins the follow-through. You should imagine that you are going to stab a tiny dot in the center of the bullseye with the tip of the knife. Of course, this is just a mental image, but it helps with accuracy and keeping the whole throwing motion same every time. Notice how the knife leaves the hand quite early and how the hand keeps heading downwards after the release. The throwing motion looks like you are chopping things in front of you. You should let the knife slide out of your hand by the force of the throwing motion. There is no need to open your grip or make any sudden flicks with the wrist. The mental image of stabbing the dot makes your wrist activity steady. It's very important to keep your core and your hips tight. Don't curve your spine and don't break at the hips to get more power. This is what I mean by breaking at the hips. My back is straight, but my bum has moved backwards and this creates a kind of a twitch what you don't want. What we are looking for is a nice diagonal line that goes from the floor to the ceiling. Now these are small things, but when the distance increases, the more important these things become. To maintain a good balance and to avoid any extra fluctuations, I recommend that you don't lift your rear foot in the air. The supporting foot, which stays completely on the ground, and the tight center section control that your follow-through doesn't go too far. Here you can actually see a one mistake. I failed to keep a tiny arch in my elbow. This will cause problems in the long run. So how should a rotating knife behave in the air on each distance? So from 3 meters you grab the handle and the knife does a full spin in the air. 4 meters and you grab the blade and the knife does one and a half spin. And on 5 meters you grab the handle again and the knife does two rotations. 6 meters blade grip two and a half spins. This is the most effective way to throw in a competition, but of course, you can throw as many rotations as you like, from whatever distance. But then we are talking about the instinctive knife throwing, which requires at least some understanding from half spin and no spin techniques. If the knife spins like this in the air, it's called bullet spin, and in rotational throwing you want to get rid of it. And it's done by changing the grip. Let's talk about grips. With different grips you can affect on how fast the knife spins in the air. Now this is a handshake grip. It's very common among throwers. By lowering the grip you can make the knife spin faster. And grabbing the knife higher you can make it spin slower. Here we have a pin grip used a lot in Russia. It's extra fast. You can also turn a knife around like this if it feels better for you. This is a hammer grip. It's a bit faster than handshake grip. By placing the thumb on the spine, you make it a modified hammer grip. This is mainly used with tomahawks when you want to slow them down on certain distances. 
you can also affect the rotational speed by changing the angle of the knife. By bending your wrist forward, you make the knife spin slower, and bending it backwards, you make the knife spin faster. If the knife hits the target like this, you can adjust the angles or play with the grips, or you can step forward one length of a knife. And if the blade points upwards, you can step back as many centimeters as your knife is long. And if you get a reverse stick like this, you can grab the knife from the blade if you threw from the handle. The principles of knife throwing apply to tomahawk throwing as well. There are a couple of things though that you should take into account. Because tomahawks are usually longer than knives, their behavior on each distance is a little different. For example, here on 5 meters the tomahawk does a 1.5 spin when the knife does a 2 spin. 